In this class, we will discuss about uh, a problem on computation of compressive load carrying capacity of a closed rectangle section uh, using IS-801 in the case of a cold form dusty structure. So it is similar to a tubular structure like this. So this is the rectangular uh, section, it is closed one. So here the thickness of this uh, section is 3 mm. Width uh, in this direction, x direction is 200 mm, overall uh, width and overall width along the y direction is 140 mm. So this is the center line, center line of the section. The effect, is, suppose if this section is used as a compressive member over a effective span of uh, length of 4 meters, uh, given uh, the Fy value, yield stress value of the material as 250 Newton per mm square, so what is the compressive load carrying capacity of this section. That is the question now. Of course, we are we have to use this IS-801 code for computing, for computing the load value. So here, uh, he has given the value of Fy as 250 Newton per mm square. So better you convert this into kg force per centimeter square because whatever equations uh, uh, they are given in uh, IS-801, F is expressed in kg force per centimeter square. So the conversion is like this. 250 uh, divided by 9.81 because 1 kg force is uh, 9.81 Newton divided by 1 mm is uh, 0.1 uh, centimeter therefore 10 power minus 1 square so if you simplify this you get the Fy value as 2548 uh, uh, kg per uh, centimeter square kg force per centimeter square so in the whatever equations uh, given in uh, IS-801 since we have to express F value stress value in terms of kg force per centimeter square, we will use this value now. Of course, the design stress, the basic uh, design stress as per the code, uh, it is taken as F, uh, that F is 0.6 times Fy, that also is in the code, so which is taken as 150 now, 0.6 into 250, 150. If you convert once again into kg force per centimeter square, you get 1529 kg force per centimeter square, that we have to substitute for F. So, Fy is 2548 and Fy is 1529. So, this is the conversion. Now, here let us uh, uh, find out the load. To find out the load, we have we need the uh, effective area. So, already I have explained in the earlier uh, lecture that uh, the effect that the load is given by the effective area multiplied by the actual stress that is going to develop. Now, to calculate that effective area, we need to first find out the effective width. So, the effective width B of this section we have to find out. Please note that this is a closed section. This is a closed section. Whatever earlier we have done, that is a channel section. Now, in the case of a closed section, all the elements will come to different elements because they are mutually supported on, on, on both the sides. So, let us take all the elements as different elements. Now, what I do here is, so in a closed section, we have to consider two widths here, one along the x direction, another along the y direction. Now, first time we take up along the x direction. So, for that uh, W by T ratio, we have to compute as per the code. So, W I will take uh, the center line uh, dimension. So, here you can see 200 mm is the total width. Uh, in that, if you deduct this uh, 3 mm thickness, uh, you are going to get uh, 197, that is center line dimension. Here, in this direction, it is uh, 137, 140 minus 3. Now, if I want to calculate uh, this W by T along the x direction, it is 197 divided by thickness is 3 mm given, so 65.7 we have got. Now, we have to calculate one more uh, ratio called W by T limiting value. Uh, here, this W by T limiting value, it is equal to 1540 by root of as per the code. So, this is given in uh, <coughs> the code. So, uh, of course, in the uh, page number, uh, uh, you can take 6, page number 6 of IS-8.1, this equation is given. So, 1540 divided by F should be in kg force per centimeter square. So, it is 1529, root of 1529, you are getting 39.2. So, we have to compare this W by T value with this W by T limiting value. So, here whatever you have got, W by T value 65.7, you can see that it is greater than this 39.4. Since if it is greater than that, then as per this, uh, the code, IS-8.1, same page number 6, uh, <coughs> so this B by T value is given by this formula. 
please note that in this formula, this F is expressed in kg force per centimeter square. Now, if you substitute the values, so here for F as 1.29 and for W P T as 6.7, uh, if you substitute and simplify, you are going to get 45.39 as the B by T ratio. Now, if you want B, it is 45.35 into T, so which is T is 3 mm, so you are going to get 136 millimeter. So 136 mm is the effective width uh, along this X direction. Since overall width is 200, center line width is 197, effective width is 136. Now coming to the other direction, Y direction, so you will take W by T, so W as is 137, there will be T is same, 3 mm, you will get 45.67. So once again, if you compare that value with the WT by W by T limiting value, once again it is greater, so same formula is used. So same formula, if it is uh, lesser, then we have to take B is equal to W. So B is equal to W means B will be equal to automatically 137, but it is greater here. So B by T value, same formula if you substitute that uh, and simplify, what is the difference is W by T, we have to take 45.67. So if you simplify, we get the B by T ratio as 41.46. So B is 41.46 into 3, so it becomes 124.4 mm along the y direction. Now, we can represent the effective width uh, in a diagram like this. So, along the x direction, you have two widths, 136 mm, that is the effective width along the x direction, and this side also, it is 136 symmetry. Then, y direction, 124.4, and this side also is 124.4. Now, the total effective width B will be equal to 2 times uh, this plus this, so it becomes 520.8. So we have calculated the total effective depth, uh, effective width for the entire uh, section given. Now when that is multiplied by the thickness, you are going to get the effective area. So thickness is 3 mm once again. So you are going to get 1562.4 mm square as the effective area of the section. So effective area means over that area, so that load uh, will be more active, very similar. So some portions, these portions, they become ineffective. So they become ineffective. So next, after that, we will let us calculate the gross uh, area of this particular section. <coughs> Taking the central line dimensions, if you calculate the gross area, so 197 plus 137 into 2 multiplied by the thickness. See, 3 mm. So you are going to get 2004 millimeter square. Now you have to calculate one important uh, parameter called form factor which is denoted by Q, uh, Fc by F into A effective divided by A. So that means it gives an idea uh, about how much uh, area is actually utilized, what percentage of area is actually, actually utilized in carrying the compressive load. So Fc is equal to F here in this case. So A effective is 1562.4, A gross is uh, 2004, so this is a gross. So if you simplify, you will get 0.78. So 0.78 is the uh, form factor for that. Then to calculate the compressive load, so we need to find out another parameter as per page 18, IS 8.1. So we have to calculate the CC value, coefficient CC value we have to compute. That CC is equal to root of 2 pi square E by FY. Once again, here E value should be in kg force per centimeter square. FY value also should be in kg force per centimeter square as per the code. If you take uh, in the code itself, we have given the E value 2074000 and uh, FY value is 2.48. We have calculated here and we have converted. So if you simplify that, you will get 156.77. Then CC divided by root Q, we have to calculate. So that is uh, 126.77 divided by root of 0.78, it comes to 143.54. Now we have to calculate the actual stress. Now we got the effective area as 1.62.4 mm square. We have to calculate the actual stress that is going to develop uh, in that uh, member. Uh, when you calculate that FA, actual stress, uh, after calculating that, you have to multiply it by a effective to get the compressive load carrying capacity of the particular section. So to calculate that FA, we need to compute the uh, radius of variation, minimum radius of variation of this particular section. Since this is not available, standard section, uh, this section is not available uh, 
uh, in the table. Let us calculate it. So what happens here? If you observe here, so this is 200. This is 450. Uh, 140. That means uh, you you have the along the x direction you have the more width. So V d cube by 2 is the moment of inertia. So when uh, which whatever uh, uh, dimension is more in whatever direction, so that becomes uh, even uh, minimum. It is some variation. In this case, what happens? Uh, B is 200. D is uh, 140. So 200 into 140 cube. 200 into 140 cube divided by 12 gives the moment of inertia of this bigger uh, rectangle. Uh, minus uh, 194. So of course you have to take this one. You have to take this one. This becomes 194, and this one becomes uh, 134. Because 6 and 1 you have to deduct on either side. So if you into 1 by 2, so bd cube by 2 minus bd cube by 2, bigger rectangle minus smaller rectangle. So this ixx becomes the minimum here because uh, d is less than b. Suppose if this uh, this is more than this, then i y y will be minimum. So I want the minimum value of moment of inertia. So ixx becomes the minimum value. So 6834652 millimeter power 4. Then, then you can calculate the minimum radius of violation or root of i minimum by a cross area. So root of i minimum is this. So this 68, 34, 652 divided by 2004 is the cross area. So under root if you take 58.4 mm, that is the minimum radius of violation you are going to get. Then we have to calculate uh, the effective uh, length is given here in this problem, 4 meters. This is given. Our effective length of the number is given 4 meter. We have to take the ratio of KL by R minimum. So KL by R minimum 4000 mm divided by 58.4 mm, you are going to get 68.5. This value you have to compare with this CC by root Q. So this value you can see that it is less than CC by root Q. If that value KL by R minimum is less than CC by uh, CC by root Q, then as per the code, in page 18 only, it is given, as per the code, you, you, you have an equation to calculate FA value, actual stress value. Let me write that uh, equation. So, just by comparing the value of uh, uh, the K L by R minimum, whatever you have got, with the CC by root Q, you can uh, write the equation, corresponding equation to calculate uh, FA, actual stress. Now, in this case, that actual stress F A, it is given in page, once again page 18. So it is given here, actual stress F A is equal to, if K L by R minimum is less than C C by root Q, F A is equal to 12 by 23 into Q into F Y, this is one term, minus 3 into Q into F Y whole square, it is there in the code. You need not remember. So 23 pi square e, 23 pi square e into KL by R whole square. See, this is what uh, is the equation. This R is nothing but R minimum. Now you know how many values. You have to just substitute. Now please keep that in mind that Fy should be in kg force per centimeter square. If you substitute the values, 1 by 23 into Q is 0.78 as we have calculated into Fy value in kg force per centimeter square is 2548, 2548, this is the first term, minus, minus 3 into 0.78 into 2548 square of that divided by 23 into pi square into once again, E value is whatever we have got, we have, we have taken there, 2074 in kg per centimeter square into KL by R is this value, 68.5 square of that. So this is the yes, A value we are going to get. Of course, this value we are going to get in kg force per centimeter square only because whatever we have substituted there, for E and uh, FY, in same units we are going to get uh, this FY value. Here we are getting 918.67 kg force per centimeter square. So this is the value of actual stress that is going to develop in that particular section.
Now let us convert this into Newton per millimeter square. So 918.767 into 9.81 Newton, 1 kg force is 9.81 Newton, divided 1 centimeter is 10 mm, so square of it. So this is millimeter square. So if you simplify this, so you are going to get 90.12 Newton per mm square. So finally we need to value Newton per mm square. So now we got both the values, the effective area and actual stress. The product of those two gives the load carrying capacity P. You can say compressive load carrying capacity of that particular section. This is compressive load. So compressive load is equal to P. That is equal to A effective multiplied by F P. Stress into effective area gives the force in this case you are getting so A effective is 1562.4 mm square into uh, A is 90.12 Newton per mm square if you multiply mm square with cancel you will get the value in Newtons of course you can convert into kilo Newton so 140.8 into 10 power 3 Newton or 140.8 kilo Newton so this is the final load carrying compressive load carrying capacity of this particular section when it is taken over a length of 4 meter. So if you increase the length 5 meters, 6 meters like that, then its load carrying capacity reduces. You can try the same problem by taking the length as 5 meters. So definitely the load carrying capacity uh, will be uh, less than 140.8 and your uh, stress value also will be less than something that uh, less than uh, 90.12. We can check that if the length decreases, then load carrying capacity increases. So this is an example of finding the uh, load compressive load carrying capacity of a closed rectangular section.